la, 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 la. Baby, I'm gonna miss all of this when we move. This entire jungle. What are we gonna do? Build a new jungle? You know it's gonna be different. Hi everyone, it's Melissa, your plantita avogada here at Tasteful Nodes, coming to you with a 2022 year-end review. And this is a review of my favorite plants of 2022. And let me tell you, this was such a hard episode to make. I didn't buy as many plants as I bought last year, so I've got some updating to do to previous um, collection episodes I've made, but that's beside the point. This year, it was super hard to choose. I mean, I was choosing until the very last minute, as you can see by all the scratches, all the markouts that I've made on my list. And I guess my point is that there are a whole bunch of plants that could replace these guys because the buying this year has been excellent. Pricing has gone down. It's a buyer's market this year. The plant bubble finally burst and it's a great time to be a plant collector. <laughs> ah, anyway, before I get started, let me run through my three disclaimers and I will jump right into introducing these guys and the rest of these guys down here because we can't all fit. Trust me, I tried. It doesn't work. So disclaimer number one, KK Bitayo Kanya Kanyang Bayad. By now, everybody should know what that means. It means that we each pay our own way. Whatever I show here, while beautiful, if it's not within your price range just yet, hold on tight. Don't spend your rent money because prices are going down and I'm sure that you'll find one within your budget pretty soon, okay? Number two, I'm not an expert. I won't claim to be an expert about plants. So any facts that I share with you here, I'll be sure to put at the bottom of the screen and I'll also include at the description box down below. So if you need to refer to anything I say here, Check the description box for direct sources. I have them laid out uh, MLA style, okay? <laughs> okay, so disclaimer number three. The plants that I'm sharing here are all grown in my microclimate and under my growing conditions. So this may or may not match up to what you're experiencing or what your plants are experiencing. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. Find people within your area who actually grow these plants and find out how they do, find out how much pricing is, find out any special information that you need to know in order for these guys to flourish under your care. We don't want too many dead plants for 2023, right? Yeah. So, in case you haven't noticed, this impl entire place is a jungle. It's a jungle, it is insane. I mean, as far as I can see, it's gone bad. Yeah, I've got that many plants. And this episode is likely going to be the last episode that we're recording in this area. And that's not because, you know, this place has turned into a jungle, I mean, partly, but it's also for safety reasons. We did find, um, we do have a lot of snakes on the property. That's fine. We have a lot of rats, so I don't mind it. But we did find a cobra um, in the housekeeper's house recently. And that was a huge scare for the entire family, um, for everybody on the property. So what we decided to do is to make family areas a little bit safer by removing a lot of places where the rats can hide, plants, right? And thus by reducing the amount of places where cobras can appear. <laughs> so a lot of these guys are going to go back into our greenhouses some of these guys are going to end up in water features that you're going to see um, this year that I'll be able to share with you. Some of these guys are actually going to end up in special projects, which you will also see probably in March this year. So I'm really excited about the direction we're taking this year. And I'm really excited to share with you the plants that brought me a lot of excitement as well. So these are my favorite plants for 2022. Let's get started. So the first plant that I have on my list is the Philodendron radiatum. And I know I've got a whole bunch of plants. Bear with me. So if you look over here, it is this guy right here. Yeah, I see that. So I'll include close-ups of this guy. But he is just stunning. 
He is gorgeous. Something interesting about the radiatum is that I actually introduced this plant, not this particular plant, but the plant in general in one of my previous vlogs. And that was my unboxing video for the Philodendron Linamii Devonsanianum. So what I did mention in the video is that the juvenile form of the radiatum is often confused with the juvenile form of the Myoii and the Philodendron elegans. So those three juvies all appear alike. That is why we wait for them to glow up. And all three of them have very different, distinct glow ups. And this guy clearly, I'll put a side shot right now, is clearly different from an elegans just based on its shape. It's a stunner. You have those angles, you have the fenestrations, you have this really wide face and it is gorgeous. We're gonna go ahead and give it a pole to climb and see what else it can do, see how much bigger it can get. Oh yeah, so the word to describe the changes, the glow up of plants is called ontogeny. Whereas human beings have a glow up, which usually takes place during puberty, plants actually have ontogeny. So ontogeny refers to the changes a plant goes through from being a seedling to being a juvenile plant to actually maturing into its final form. So those stages is called ontogeny. And if you wanna see the difference between radiatum elegans and myoii, check out my unboxing video for the Philodendron Linamii. Actually, it's new name, it's old new name. If you watch the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So it's old, but newer to us name is Philodendron De Devonsanianum. So check that video out. I've got some great information there regarding the differences and I hope you enjoy that one because I'm just totally geeking out about the fact that, you know, coming full circle plant-wise. The second favorite I have for 2022 is a sibling, is a sibling of the Anthurium Delta Force. And I say that with an asterisk at the end, sibling. So a lot of people tend to think that if you, if you hybridize two of the same plants, that you're going to get the same result always at the end, especially when it comes to seeds. And that is oftentimes not true. So this plant is absolutely one of those cases. And I don't know if you can see how gorgeous he is. I mean, he's got, he's got these beautiful, gorgeous, roughly leaves. Yeah, can you see that? Those really prominent veins in the middle. And he's got this really cardboardish feel, feel to it, right? It's, it's a substantial leaf. It's not one of those delicate leaves at all, no. No, sir. But you can also see the similarity to the Pedata radiatum with all of these little um, sides that pop out. So you've got some jaw or some cheekbones right here. You've got a lot of these ruffles, ruffling that happens. The other leaves are similar to that where you could see where the Pedata radiatum could actually come out. So the Delta Force was created by Steve Nock in the 90s, I believe. And it was a selected seedling out of a whole bunch of seedlings made of a hybrid of Anthurium clarinervium and Anthurium pedata radiatum. And that's why I began this part by saying that. This plant has no name. And I will just be calling it Anthurium clarinervium by pedata radiatum hybrid. And that's what I like about it is it's unique. It is its own plant and it's the closest I'm gonna to get to an Anthurium Delta Force until at least the Thai clones actually show up to have the same features as the Anthurium Delta Force. I'm hopeful, keeping my fingers crossed. But until then, this is my Anthurium Delta Force type plant. If you watch my video with Atime Tolentino, her garden tour, she actually mentions something she read in Enid's book. So Enid of NSC Tropicals, right? And she's got a lustworthy Anthurium Delta Force. I've been lusting after that plant. In fact, she was the person, her plant made me want an Anthurium Delta Force, right? So what Atame said is that 
Enid actually encourages people to plant their anthurium seeds because you never know that there might be a one out of a hundred chance, one out of a thousand chance, that you're going to have a mutation. And apparently, based on reading that I've done online, that's exactly what happened to Steve, Stephen Knox's um, anthurium delta force, is he had these hybrid seeds, he planted them, and then he found that one plant that looked so different from the others, and that was the plant that he chose and named Anthurium Delta Force, and the rest is history. You know, we get clones off of that plant. Clones, meaning um, asexual reproduction, so it's not going to be through seed. There won't be any chances of, of it having different characteristics, because if you think about seed, it's kind of like family, siblings, right? We each come from the same parents, but we each have different characteristics. And that's what happens when you grow seedlings from seeds. They tend to have different characteristics. And that is my unknown Anthurium hybrid. That's my second plant of 2022. My third plant of 2022 is <laughs> another cultivar plant. It is a cultivar of the Colocasia esculenta, and I'll probably have to bring it down just a little bit so you can see it. So here we go. This, my friends, this is a Colocasia esculenta black coral. And we bought this from Rua's Garden in Cavite. Tagaytay, Cavite, yeah, that area. If you're in the Philippines, you know what I'm talking about. And this gorgeous guy, my goodness. So I don't know if you could see it on screen, but I'll try my best to get angles. But it's already showing that leathery center that black corals are so well known for. And from the, its younger leaves, where it was just in the middle slightly, you've got older leaves popping out. This guy, I don't know what happened. But yeah, definitely a lot more leathery than the older leaves. And this is the newest leaf. We've got another leaf coming out right here in the back. And I'm so excited to see how that will turn out. So I said that we're going to have some interesting videos coming up for 2023. And one of them is a water feature. So we're building a pond. If you watched my plant garden tour with Albert Howell Tang, the one, his outdoor plant garden tour, Totally inspired, right? So I have a little, it's a called a kawa, which is a really wide cooking device. It's a pot. If you're in the US and you remember Looney Tunes, it's that big pot that Bugs Bunny used to take a bath in. You know, really wide. <laughs> and you know, someone would put wood underneath and try to cook him. That's the kawa. So I have one of those. And I decided to go ahead and seal it because it had cracked, seal it up. And since it's not usable, turn it into a water feature. So I have a whole bunch of collocations in there. This guy provides great contrast because of his black leaves. I have a teacup collocation in there. I have a white lava. I have a non collocation a, gosh, what is that? A Johnstonii there. So a whole bunch of things, and that's something that I'll show you in the future because we're building another water feature because of Albert Howell Tang's inspiration. So that's another video to watch for, and I'm so excited to share my third plant, my third favorite plant of 2022, which is the Colocasia black coral. So plant number four on my list for 2022 was something that I saw earlier on in, in the year, and I saw it on a friend's Facebook page and I won't mention who it is because it's a private it's a personal account oh my gosh it is such a stunner and that would be the philodendron meloei and let me see if I could grab one of its leaves right back here it's this guy right here no so the meloei it's a newly introduced philodendron to the plant community in fact it was gosh just last year I think and it's such a stunner. It has these beautiful pink leaves when it unfurls, when it's newly unfurled. And it turns a cream color before it turns into a light green color. It's just a stunning plant. It is a trilobe. It was featured in my trilobed episode. 
so my trilobe plant trilobed plants episode if you want to see a closer look and see who named it find more information but it is one of my more satisfying plants of the year it appears to be a crawler so I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm doing with it in the future because crawlers man they get kind of huge I'm looking at my gloriosum and my glorious over there on the other side that I have to move but yeah the crawlers are big boys that tend to take up a lot of space and <laughs> if this guy is anything like those guys over there I'm in for a lot of trouble. The fifth plant on my favorites of 2022 list is the variegated Monstera leclariana and it is a gorgeous gorgeous plant and until recently we did not have any confidence in buying variegated Edisonii type plants because we always had them revert. It was ridiculous. I think we bought maybe four, four plants that reverted, including the variegated Monstera Leclariana in my Monstera collection episode. So yeah, that reverted too. This guy has given us new leaves since we bought it and they're all white. For those curious where I got this Leclariana from, I got it from a Filipino plant seller called Project Propagate, and he sometimes sells from Thailand. So if you are in the US, I'm assuming he might be able to ship to the US as well since he's shipping from Thailand to the Philippines. Might be worth checking him out. This plant is the show off of the Monstera, of the variegated Monsteras that I have. It's just such a showy plant. And this would make it number five my fifth favorite plant of 2022. So the sixth plant of my favorites of 2022 list is this guy. And what a looker he is. Look at that. That is an Anthurium peltigerum. And uh, so Forgetii, right? Forgetii has leaves a little bit more similar to this guy. Peltigerum has that closed sinus at top that you see, but he also has these darker almost i don't know how to describe it almost disappearing veins through the front but through the back you can see them quite clearly he has this shape that is similar to the forgetty eye but he feels very leathery and such an easy anthurium to care for i mean so satisfying in the fact that you could just leave him there water go no repeat and you know he, he'll continue giving you leaves and he'll continue giving you bigger leaves like this guy right here leaves are getting bigger and huger so peltigerum is an anthurium that i would definitely recommend normally normally i shy away from anthurium but this year has been an anthurium year for some reason you know i've got i've got three anthuriums on my list this year so yeah, anthuriums are showing up high on my list. The anthuriums that I am recommending are not difficult to raise at all. And, you know, not all anthuriums have to be drama queens, like, like anthurium warquianum. War yeah, like that. No, it doesn't have to be. So this guy lives outdoors. He does not live in a terrarium setting for me. It is kind of dry here. We live in a tropical savanna microclimate where I'm at in the Philippines. And he's perfectly fine with the drier conditions so long as I provide him extra water, extra humidity through the watering and what is that called? Pebble trays. He's good to go. Easy plant, would definitely recommend. And that's plant number six for 2022. That plant I got from one of my favorite sellers, Suave Roids. He is also who I got the Forgetii from. And I got a platycerium relii from as well just super super quality plants the seventh plant that i have on my list right there in front of the pelty is let me see if i could move this leaf out of the way there you go is a philodendron soderoi the reason this is a big deal for me is because <laughs> we bought a soderoi last year and it was quite horrifying because we, we were like, okay, what's going on? Is this a variegation? 
um, what's going on? Is this a mechanical defect in how the leaf started to unfurl? Oh my gosh, what's going on? Why is this thing crinkling up? Are we lacking humidity? It was just such a horror story that I did some research on it and it turned out I wasn't the only person who was dealing with my Soderoy having issues. If you watched Only Plants's, I think it was on his Instagram account, can't remember the name off the top of my head, but he has a compilation of the Soderoy scandal. Our plant was one of those Soderoy scandal plants. The gist of it is that someone probably tissue cultured a sick plant, a diseased plant. Check out Only Plants' coverage of the Soderoy scandal. If you happen to have a variegated Soderoy and you're not sure if the variegation is right, and if you notice that the leaves are getting deformed, check it out, just check those out. But let me get back to my story. I was super thrilled to find one of these because after we realized we had one of those diseased Soderoys, we destroyed our plant. We destroyed it. Um, we got another small one, but you know, it just wasn't growing too great. And then we visited Atime Tolentino and we told her about the Soderoy scandal and she's like, oh, I have a Soderoy. When did this scandal start? And we're like, oh, probably maybe 2019, 2020, thereabouts. She's like, oh, well, I had my Soderoy for a really long time. Let me show you. Guys, I was floored. I was floored. And most of her plants are giants because she's been collecting since the 90s, I believe. Yeah. So she's like, well, let me give you one. And what she did, she just cut it off. And she's like, here, you could root it. And you could take care of it. And we're just like, <laughs> you know, shock, thrill, um, excitement, everything. It's like, <laughs> anyway, so we got a premium specimen from pre Soderoy scandal times. And it's just gorgeous. It, we are thrilled to pieces with it. We can't wait to give it its own tree because it absolutely deserves a tree but we're probably going to wait until after the summer season because it's starting to get really hot and it's January 1st. Wildfires are happening, so we're going to wait. We're going to wait to give it its tree. For the meantime, we're probably going to give it a really tall pole. But yeah, so that is plant number seven on our favorites of 2022 list, the Philodendron Soderoi. Now I'm gonna start covering myself up very, very slowly because these plants I'm gonna show you are giants. So let's start with the smallest one, okay? This, my friends, is a Philodendron Orange Princess. And I know I had an unboxing video for this, but it truly is one of my favorite plants. And let me tell you why. So. It's got the body of an arabescence. It's got the body of like, you know, majesty, philodendron majesty, strawberry shake, the likes. So it's got that red stem and everything. But unlike the philodendron pink princess, new leaves always come out orangish, which is fantastic. And it's just gorgeous. And it's always exciting to see. But the thing is when the leaves get older, they turn green. That's okay. They're still interesting. They still have that um, Monstera Thai constellation pattern on them, which is completely fine. But you still have that decorative feature of these dark stems against these constellation pattern leaves. And it's just such a delight. It really is. It's a fairly easy plant. It's got all of these aerial roots that are popping out. So I need to do more than give it a measly stick, right? I need to actually give it a pull. But when I got it, it was teeny, teeny, tiny. That's my goal for this year, is to make this guy get big. Because I've seen a friend's philodendron orange princess, baby Moody's. Oh my gosh, it's quite nice and it's huge. So I have a favorite for 2022 right here and a plant goal for 2023 as well, rolled into one. And that, my friends, is plant number eight. Favorite plant number eight for 2022. For those curious, the Philodendron Orange Princess I bought from Plant Specialist. She's able to ship abroad. So if you're looking for things like this, feel free to contact her as well. So she's actually 
on Facebook as Plant Specialist Philippines, and she's on Instagram as Plant Express PH. There we go. So I'll put both of those names and icons down at the bottom so that you're familiar with what to look for in case you're interested in ordering um, an orange princess or any of the Philippine native synapses that are making the rounds in the inter international plant community right now. Okay, let's move on to the next plant. So this was a plant that I did not know I needed. I did not know I needed in my life. Why would I need an Anthurium luxuriens? Because, <laughs> because it's beautiful. It's such a wonderful plant. It is a really corrugated plant, really firm, shiny, smooth. It's got these beautiful petioles that are winged on all four sides, four sides, because it's a square petiole when you cut it sideways from the top. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Four-sided petiole, which has wings. I mean, teeny tiny wings, but so, so pretty. The newer leaves have pinkish tones to them, and you can still see that on the petioles as well. The top parts of the petioles have more undulation to them, which is um, waviness. And it's got a lot of those actually at the top part of its petiole. It's really, really pretty. And oh yeah, so there are those square petioles that I mentioned. I'm gonna go put side by side up a close up right next to me. But would absolutely recommend the Anthurium luxuriens, just as my friend Paolo completely recommended and you know sent my way. He totally knew what he was doing. He was just like, okay, here you go. You need this in your life. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I will. So this Anthurium is so much easier than its Philodendron Luxuriance counterpart, rest in peace. For the Philodendron Luxuriance, you absolutely need more temperate weather with high humidity. Otherwise that thing will just melt. It's horrible. Or terrarium, terrarium. It's just such a difficult plant. Whereas this guy, super easy. Uh, so we have two old leaves that burned. You know, I live in a really harsh area that I have to maintain and create microclimates for. You know, by adding more plants, adding more trees. Still a work in progress, but it's so forgiving. And this one, this leaf right here, you see this bottom part? Bitten by my dog right before it unfurled. And it continued to give me two more leaves after that. So this plant is just such a genuinely easy anthurium to care for. The anthuriums that I mentioned today, all easy. I would probably also recommend anthuriums to you guys this year. Maybe, just saying. Maybe that's a hint for the next episode. I don't know, you're gonna have to find out. <laughs> so plant number nine for 2022 is the anthurium luxuriens. Plant number 10 on my list is an Epipremnum. So another Epipremnum you might be familiar with is the Epipremnum aureum, which is the golden pothos, the misnomer, right? It's not a pothos, it's an Epipremnum. Or you might be familiar with Cebu Blues, Epipremnum pinatum Cebu Blue, right? Fine, this is an Epipremnum, but it's neither of those. It's called an Implicimum. And let me gra grab it real quick. So this guy, I actually had, I mean, it, it went over the top and then it went down to the sides and the bottom. So I actually propagated it and gave away a whole bunch of them. And look at how beautiful these leaves are. Totally tropical vibe. They're, it's variegated and it's just such a stunning plant and such a giving plant too. So within this pot, I have one, two, three. I have three offsets right at the bottom. That's why it's so lush like this. And then of course I cut the top vining part and that is what I gave away to a lot of friends. And I still have propagations in my potting shed. So go figure. This is one of those plants that if you want to give away plants to your friends for special occasions or holidays, this is a plant that you would keep at home because it's easy it's not a golden pothos, but it's even more stunning than one. The Epipremnum amplissimum, variegated. This guy, let me go ahead and stick it close. 
This guy I purchased from a seller in Laguna called Bay Secret Garden. And it's such a gorgeous plant. Beautiful, beautiful leaves. Would definitely recommend it to anybody who's looking for something different, but something that's not too high maintenance. That is plant number 10 for 2022. Plant number 11 for 2022. I'm slowly disappearing now. Is an itty bitty guy, kinda. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Itty bitty, itty bitty pot, I suppose I should say. But yeah, itty bitty guy, look at that. See the size of this leaf? Well, it was a mid cut and Here's the new leaf that came out. Bigger than my head. Or almost as big as my face. Bigger than my face, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This, my friends, <laughs> don't get shocked. This is a Monstera obliqua terrapoa. Now, with this plant, <laughs> I remember last year when a whole bunch of people got angry. There was a big, huge fight in the plant community that I help moderate. And big, huge fight was that that can't possibly be a Monstera obliqua because one, it doesn't look like one, and two, Monstera obliquas cost 100,000 pesos or more, which at the time, you know, exchange rate was around $2,000. And we're just like, false! <laughs> you know, that's not true, guys. Don't be spreading fake news. There are actually a whole bunch of different types of Monstera obliquas. Notice that the one that's most popular is the Monstera obliqua Peru. And notice that there's a designation, Peru at the end. Monstera obliquas come in many different places. So to just say that only one Monstera obliqua exists, and that's the Peru, was patently false. And two, to say that it's not a real Monstera obliqua because it didn't cost $2,000 was also patently untrue because clearly different plants bring on different prices. But this guy, long boy, uh, compared to the Monstera Obliqua Peru, which is really delicate and lacy looking, this guy is humongous and lacy looking. The fenestrations hang on just barely, as you can see right down here. It's literally a thread over here as well. and. I can't wait to bring this new growth to that same size. We do have some, a new leaf coming out as well. So this is gonna be a fun one for us. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a viner um, that likes to throw out runners, which the Monstera Obliqua Peru likes to do. If it doesn't throw out viners or uh, runners, then I'm happy, I'm good to go. And that is plant number 11 on the list. That is the Monstera obliqua terrapoa. Last plant on the list. I don't know if you're going to see me after this. I'm going to try, okay? Last plant on the list is a plant that was on my wish list from last year. Nine plants wish list of 2022 was the name of the episode. And I can't tell you how thrilled I was to see it. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to see it give new leaves. I can tell you I wasn't very thrilled to realize that it was a crawler, a creeper, because it's getting big and I'm running out of space. I'm going to make a plant box for it because it deserves a plant box. It does. It's just beautiful. This, my friends, is a Philodendra de Vanceniano, formerly known and more popularly known as Philodendron linamii. So the Devancinianum name is a complicated one. This plant was discovered in the 1800s and what happened was that it was named, it was introduced to botanical society and then it disappeared to history. I believe it was in France at the time where it was introduced and the wars, of course, eradicated records, eradicated specimens. And it was later on named in the United States as Philodendron linamii after Ralph Linum. Linum. And it wasn't until recently that it was rediscovered. And it was actually 
one of the initial specimen plants that was brought to Europe. So colorful history, just as colorful as the new growth it shows. Let me show that to you as well. Yeah, so new growth comes out pink and gorgeous. And look at this. Yeah, it's red. It's no joke. It comes out red. The petioles start out red and then they darken over time. They darken into a green. There's that creeping, crawling habit that I mentioned that just took me aback. And I had to repot it because it was not very happy the way it was. And that's it right now. So a lot of big, huge leaves. The leaves are almost as big, if not bigger than my face. And it's just such a gorgeous plant and it still makes me happy. Even if it's a crawler, creeper, trying to run out of its pot, I'm still really happy about it. And I would definitely recommend to people who have space or patience <laughs> because you will need both. <laughs> ah. And if you want more information about that plant in detail, check out my Philodendron linamii unboxing video, okay? This is favorite plant number 12 of 2022. So that's one plant for each month of the year. And it was a hard decision to make. So if I left out your favorite plants, don't feel bad. I probably feel bad about it too. If you enjoyed today's episode, feel free to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell to get notified of future content. It's gonna be good stuff coming up this year. If you miss me and you can't take these once a week videos, check me out on Facebook. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes. And if you just wanna look at pretty pictures at night, check me out on Instagram. I post pictures and short videos there as well. I'm on Instagram as Tasteful Nodes. Okay guys, so signing off from this filming area for the very last time, I wish you and yours a peaceful and kinder, gentler 2023. Let's make this a good one. Sa uulitin until next time. Keep your notes classy and tasteful. Bye.